is it really that important to have the clearance that they ask for around your styling dish? Keep it simple, keep it real. Now I have to admit, um, I'm, uh, I'm still playing with Starlink and at work, when we use it at work at the workshop, there's actually um, obstructions that we get. So during the day, we set it up and then um, about seven or eight hours later, we get an update on our app to say there is an obstruction and you can actually um, see where it is. And it tells you every two or three minutes, expect a little bit of an outage, a little bit as in, we don't actually notice it in the office, but the app tells you there's an obstruction. Now here at home, I thought today, which is a Saturday, I'll do it again because I've set up the dish this morning. Um, it's set it up, it goes straight to the sky, all good and well. But here to my right, as you can see on this video, I mean, there's, there's an old edge home behind us. And um, it's a huge obstruction. So I was assuming, and I still am assuming, that satellites as they cross the sky, there's a point where they're actually going to go behind that building. Yet, the app is um, not quite telling me that's a big problem. So. What I'm going to do now is just first show you what I see now, then I'm going to move the dish. I'm going to move it, I'll try to break it, and when I break it, I'll show you what exactly you can do. So let's see what the experiment does, and I'll get back to you tomorrow. Okay, so it's a Sunday morning here, so I had the uh, unit standing overnight in that place where I know it is not an ideal place. I mean, I, I moved it about five meters closer to this building that I have on my, my left at the moment um, and overnight I got some results on Starlink so let's just um, I just want to show you what it actually looks like on the app itself because you can study it and that's that's the beauty that's what I really wanted to show so I'm on the app itself um, now what you see here is there's actually a, a warning sign and that comes after seven eight hours so they say 12 hours it takes at least 12 hours but I thought let's go extreme so you see there's obstructed and it says well, how long did it say? Every five minutes, not even that bad, but um, still bad enough. Um, so now this, this field of view from the dish, so the dish is looking that way. You can see if I stand behind the camera, I just want to co coordinate it. So I'm facing the way that the dish is facing here. You can see that. That's basically matching, matching the same direction. So there's the field of view if I am the dish. And you can see there's some red spots on the right. So some red spots on the right means something is that way, which matches. So there we go. So there's an obstruction and you can see that on this, this image there. But it always keeps rotating, but, but while it's rotating, you can still fiddle around. You can, if you didn't know, obviously like I, I could clearly see it here. If you just had a few red spots, that's where you would need to see, is there something I can do to remove those red spots, either by moving my dish a little bit to, um, away from it or to do the obstruction itself. Obviously when it's a tree you could either decide to trim the tree or you can um, move your dish. Now I guess one of the things that's um, um, obvious when you are um, interested in satellite technology but when you're actually just curious why is it so important, why doesn't it just face in one direction and say well that's where it's going. The whole concept of um, Starlink is that they have thousands of satellites and they're planning to do more that keeps rotating around the earth they keep them very low 500 kilometers but lower but higher um, and at that that height the um, satellites need needs to keep moving now there's a really beautiful app um, out there or app actually website um, satellite map dot space um, and they they um, keep updating what's happening or where the, the satellites are currently in the sky so i'm just going to zoom in to um, where we are. Now you can see they actually added the new feature since I last checked is um, they show the cells, which is quite awesome. You can see where there is coverage and where things are operational for Starlink. You can see obviously the US is um, properly covered um, and here in Australia as well. Um, we're quite fortunate in South Australia that we are also now in there. Um, so I'm just zooming into what I know, um, South Australia, and you can see the satellites that are currently above us or, or basically in the, in the region. Um, now. You need to go and zoom into your region to get an appreciation how fast these things are moving. Um, they, they basically rotate the Earth every about hour and a half, about every 90 minutes. So if you, if, if, for me to know, but there's a satellite, say that one, uh, whatever, just want to zoom on it. I know how long it takes me from tra to travel from the one point to the other point on this map that I'm seeing here. Seeing this satellite, the, seeing the speed that it's actually moving on, it's, it's incredible. Um, I mean, nerd fact, why is that? Is these things are 500 kilometers high, so there is, if you remember in school, maybe you remember, maybe you don't, um, 
we had the whole thing of centrifugal force. So basically when you have a little, this is <laughs> just, just a um, toothbrush charger, um, I can swing this and as I swing this, as I swing at the right speed, basically the force of the rope and the centrifugal force keeps it rotating and it keeps a straight line. When I go too slow, well, it's going to fall. If I go too fast, well obviously it actually wants to go further out. Um, and that's for a certain length. Now if I make it a longer length, I can go much slower. And it still has the same effect, but if I go too slow, it's just going to fall down. That's what the satellites need to do to go through as well. They need to move at a certain speed around the Earth so that that force, the, um, they can basically cancel out the um, gravitation as well. Gravity, gravity, gravitation, I don't know. Um, they cancel out gravity so that they can look like they are floating in the sky. The other thing there, which is uh, this in Australia, there's the NBN SkyMaster, which basically uses geostationary satellites. Now the perception is there's a satellite that's just always hovering exactly at the same position. We just point our satellites, like our TV satellites, we point in one direction, that thing stays there. Why does that stay there? Why doesn't that one have to move? Well, it does move, but that's where this long rope comes in. It moves at such a speed that it matches the speed of the Earth as it rotates in the day. So every 24 hours, it needs to rotate once around the Earth so that it actually does not fall down. That can be done at around 35,000 kilometers. 35,000 kilometers versus 500 kilometers. That's where one of the massive opportunities and the big problems of MBN SkyMaster actually lies. That I did a quick check and it's quite easy to calculate. It takes about 250 milliseconds, a quarter of a second for the radio wave to go up to the geostationary satellite that's 35,000 kilometers and back. So 70,000 kilometers round trip for a radio wave, it's about a quarter second. That's no electronics, that's no delay, that's no signal processing, nothing yet. That's just basically radio wave up, radio wave down. Your latency cannot be anything better than a quarter of a, sec quarter of a second. That's just the, the physics. With the 500 kilometer one, it's much faster. That's why we can look at these 50, 60 milliseconds kind of um, latencies we currently have, or ping speeds that we currently have with Starlink. Okay, well, that's really it. What I um, can show just in concept in what's, what's possible with Starlink. Obviously, we keep testing and we keep seeing 200, um, 200 to almost 300 um, megabits per second download speed. So it works and it works awesome, and that's really, um, the best thing there. One big question that's coming up that I see a lot online is, is 5G faster than Starlink? Oh well, I thought we have 5G here, I have a nice 5G modem, so in the next video on this channel I'm just going to put my 5G modem next to the Starlink in different places here in, um, in the south of Adelaide. Um, some places where 5G is bad, some places where 5G is good. We're going to see what we get. Well, I guess I know the answer, but it's still good to test it and just to answer that question so that everybody who has that question can actually um, now get, an, get an appreciation for that. Um, if you want to see that, please subscribe to our channel. If you like what we're doing, like our videos, comment on our videos, um, and also if you have any questions, give us a call um, on our phone number on our website, rofshop.com.au. Um, other than that, I'm going to enjoy my Sunday, and thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.